Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacy. This is going to be my April reading wrap up. It was kind of a weird month for me. Um, I was all over the place with my books, but let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, the first book that I read in April was Everyone on This Train is a Suspect by Benjamin Stevenson. And I love this one. I gave this one five stars. This is book two and it comes after everyone in my family is a serial killer or everyone in my family has murdered someone, some, something like that. And I'm so sorry. I don't remember the name of it. I didn't read book one and I didn't realize that this was the second book. Um, but that being said, I was able to read this book without being confused. The author does reference things from the first book, but it's not, um, confusing. It is well explained. And so I understood where we were at and what was going on. Um, but yeah, this is a modern murder mystery that takes place on a train that travels all the way from the north of Australia to the southern coast of Australia. And this is based off of a real train. I did like a deep dive into this train and I would love to ride it one day. Um, this train ride actually does exist. And it's about a group of mystery authors that all get um, put together on this train for like a mystery writers retreat festival type of thing it was called. And while they're on the train, murder happens. And the, the narrator of the story is one of the mystery authors and he's trying to figure out who done it. And I love the way that this is written. It is written unlike any murder mystery book I've read because he points out the clues to you. He talks to you through the process and lets you know, like, pay attention to this part. This is important. This is going to come up again later. Uh, it's stuff like that. And I thought it was so clever and so fun in the way that it was written. So yeah, if you love um, murder mysteries and especially with the setting in Australia, that made it just 10 times better. Uh, and I read this book, but I bet the audio version would be phenomenal because I'm sure it's read with Australian accents. So anyway, five stars for that book. Loved it. The next one I read was Last Light by Terry Blackstock. And I've read several other of her books and really love her books. This one was a very frustrating read for me because the main character is a college kid. I say kid, but she's like 22 and maybe she's even graduated. She's graduated from college. So she's not a kid at all. I don't know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> she came across like the snottiest 12 year old. She was mean and horrible and just, I just wanted to, mm. <laughs> being a parent of someone who is that age, I was just enraged through this whole book with her attitude. I found this to be an incredibly um, annoying, awkward, infuriating read because of her. And I understand the author made her so terrible so she can have a very large arc and come around in the end like that that was obvious that was going to happen but getting through the majority of the book with this girl was so frustrating uh the parents were also frustrating because it's obvious that they had allowed this behavior for a very long time the story itself was fascinating because it was about um what seems to be like an emp going off across the world um, where it takes out everything electronic. Um, it's not an EMP. It's a Christian fiction and it's God doing this. So yeah, I'm really not sure how I want to rate this book. Um, I did really like the ending and how things came around at the end. And I think this is book one in a three part series, a trilogy. So I do want to continue on and see how it plays out. I just was very frustrated through a lot of the books, so I don't really know how to rate this. The next one I read was Double Take by Lynette Eason. I gave this one four stars. This is Christian um, Romantic Suspense. I enjoyed this one uh, mainly because of the main characters. Uh, it is a military guy, a guy who recently got out of the military. I really um, have a deep love for military characters. So um, I really liked the characters in this book. 
it was a very um, interesting premise to where this girl had a very ab abusive boyfriend and they got into a fight and she thought she shot him and killed him. And then um, I want to say it was like maybe 18 months later, she thinks she's seeing him around town and she, like weird things are happening. And so she's confused as is he actually dead or not? So that was a very interesting um plot. <laughs> so I enjoyed it a lot. I like the characters. I like the story. The only issue I had was when everything is solved at the end, that didn't make sense to me. The reasoning behind um, what the, the person was doing, I was like, that's not how that would work. It couldn't work in the way he thought it would work. There's no way it could work the way he thought it would work. So I was very confused by that. But other than that, it was a very good book. Next was Night Falls on Predicament Avenue. I struggle with that word so much. Um, by Jamie J. Wright. I gave this one 3.5 stars. I didn't love this one. I am very hit or miss with Jamie J. Wright. I, I'm feeling like her books are becoming very formulaic. They're, it's just kind of the plots are very similar and the dual timeline. It's just... I don't know. Her last book, The Lost Boys of Barlow Theater, was phenomenal. And the one before that, the, the uh, Withers Farm, I can't remember the real name of it. Those two were so good. This one I just kind of felt was uh, unrememberable. Um, I feel like once I read it, I was like, okay, that's a thing that I read and I'm not going to think about it. It's not one that made an impression on me. I didn't connect with any of the characters. And again, the the person that's doing bad things in the book, that didn't make any sense to me. It, it wasn't well explained of why, what was the reasoning for this. It was just kind of thrown out there, like this is the person and this is what the person did. I'm trying to be vague, but I was like, I what? That's crazy. <laughs> that's just crazy. Um, and I feel like, I know all of her books have a paranormal element to them. And because it's Christian fiction, the paranormal stuff is always explained. There's a reason for it. And I feel like in this book, the ghost element was kind of just thrown in because she writes those sorts of books. But I felt like it was very unnecessary. Like it didn't need to be there, but it's just part of the formula. Does that make any sense? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but that's just how I felt. Um, so yeah, I didn't love it. The next one was If the Boot Fits by Karen Wittemeyer. Oh, Karen. <laughs> this is the second book I have read from her, and I think I'm just going to be done with her. I, I like. She puts stuff in her books that I really find questionable from a Christian standpoint. And this one... She puts something in this book. Again, I want to be vague about this, but the character used scripture to sin, to justify her sinning. And she continued doing this sin for at least a year. And then even though she talked about like, yeah, I, I know this was wrong. And yeah, like I'm going to, you know, ask the Lord for forgiveness, which is great. She never admitted what she did to the person that was wronged. That tied with the justification of the, the process the person went through to do the thing that they did, which was horrible, absolutely horrible. Um, it was quite shocking to, to read that part of the story. It just left me with a bad taste in my mouth. I feel like if I were a new Christian and I didn't really understand the Bible or Jesus that that could be confusing and I I didn't like it I didn't like it so yeah I'm not gonna be reading anymore from Karen Wittemeyer that being said the whole beginning of the story I was bored um, I wasn't that interested in the book to begin with but then when that thing happened I was just like are you kidding this cannot be <laughs> I'm not okay with this the next one and the last one that I read was The Delusion by Laura Gallier. This one I gave four stars. This one was quite good, but it was very depressing. It really brought me down and I'm feeling kind of um, like currently right now, I'm feeling like weighed down from reading this. It was a very 
tough, sad, morbid read. And I want to give a trigger warning for suicide. Yeah, I do not recommend this book if you have any history with that. Um, I would avoid this book. I don't have a history with that and I really, it was tough to get through. I understand that the stuff in this book is based off of reality. There are demons and angels and a battle being waged around us that we can't see, but it it was very real and in your face and some of the things being described. Um, she talks a lot about Moloch in this book and there were scenes with Moloch that were very disturbing. So um, it's an important read, just like um, This Present Darkness is, but it was very difficult. So I would recommend reading this book if you are like not in a good place. That being said, if you like Christian supernatural stuff, highly recommend it. It's very well written. And I say that coming from a place where I don't like YA. I don't typically enjoy YA reads. And this um, is very YA. It's about an 18 year old boy. And he's, you know, in high school and he's talking about prom and stuff like that. And I, that's just not my cup of tea. But uh, yeah, I thought it was really good. It's very important, but just, you know, be prepared for it mentally. So yeah, those are the books that I read in April. Does anybody else feel like it's been May the whole month of April? I feel like we're already at the end of May, but it's the end of April and I can't wrap my head around that. Anyway, um, I hope y'all had a great month and you have a great May and I will see y'all soon. Bye.